So this was my choice, if I remember the schedule correctly. Yes, this is your choice. And it wasn't really a choice. It was more forced upon me uh, because of my valid, correct opinion on Big Trouble in Little China being a terrible movie. Oh, okay, first of all, let me just, before we get into this movie... We already caused a lot of problems last week with not liking Rocky Horror Picture Show. Like, okay. the world came for us. So, I did find some support out there. So, all the people out there saying, you're alone, we're not alone. And for the record, I didn't say that I hated Rocky Horror. We didn't Horror's hate the message. We didn't hate the music. We didn't hate Tim Curry. Or the culture around it. We hated the, f- the plot. Right, and I think that got lost in the messaging because people were attacking me, saying that this isn't about the plot, it's about the culture, it's about all of that, but that wasn't my point. My point was the plot, so just want to put that out there before we get into this because he's paying penance right now watching this movie because he hated Big Trouble in Little China, and that's actually what he said, attacking us for saying we hated an entire movie when it was a specific element of a movie is a different thing i still stand by that statement that big trouble is a terrible movie all the way around you didn't like anything about it no there was I, nothing zero things it was borderline racist it had a very tenuous plot at best no uh, did you like kurt russell i mean he was just so much over the top in but that you movie. like him as an actor you didn't like him in that he, movie he's fine as an actor i don't have a problem with t- with Kurt Russell, it just in that movie, it just rubbed me the wrong way all the way around. Like it was just not my not okay. my jam. So after he didn't like that movie, the internet blew up. That was the first time the internet blew up on us, I believe. And yes. we put out a poll saying what movie should we force him to watch since he hated it so much. And now, I did you think... ask which Kurt Russell movie or which so John I Carpenter did. movie? I asked what Kurt Russell movie. I put the thing on there at the time, not realizing that. Kurt was, Russell and John Carpenter were both involved in that as well, but people did let me know in the comments, like, hey, we have to pick the thing because they're teamed up again, so we have to. So, like, I think the internet was well aware of what was going on, and that's why this got chosen. But I will start by saying, I don't think either one of us hated this movie. No, this is a... The thing is a horror classic, and I can uh, uh, certainly understand why. I mean... Well, so let's let's look at just the overall first. There was a plot... That I understood. It it it, it, had a it was a strange plot, but it, it was, was a strange continuous plot, but it was and linear and made sense. Now there's an ending issue, but it was an intentional ending issue. It was not a problem. It there wasn't. Was a, it wasn't the girl was in the house. There was a plot hole, though. There was a. We'll get to that, but just funny. We're we're getting off track. I'm Tyler. I'm Shay. And this is cinematically correct. The movie is the thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. Right, the 1982 version. I know there's other versions floating around out there. Which is a remake of the original version, which was... Not a remake. What, a... It's different, so I guess okay. a reimagining. Okay, reimagining, not a remake. Because this one is apparently closer to the source material than the, first, the one. first one. Which the source material is a short story called... I wish I could find it. Um, I literally can't find it at the moment, but it is a short story... That, yeah, I can't find it. Just can't. So if you can help me out, dear, that would be great. I don't I... have it. Right. Why would oh, I have it? Oh, it's called Who Goes There? And it's by John Campbell. It's about a 32-page short story. Which is now added to our reading list. Yes, because I do need to read it. But this apparently is very close to the source material. So we're going to go over a brief plot, I guess. Yeah. Uh, this one actually has a plot where we can explain it and make sense. So... There is a research station in Antarctica. For what? What do they research? Uh, just generic research station. Yeah. It's not. There, there is no... They never explained what they research or why they're there. And I guess there's no residents of Antarctica. So it didn't make sense. because that's there's one no of the, residents of Antarctica. People are there through the winter. There's no permanent residents of Antarctica. According to all of the no, discussion you go, you and go debate on, rota- on Reddit. You, don't go on, you go on rotation. You don't stay there as in live there forever. Well, right. So they were saying that there has to be a reason why they're there. And that was never discussed. I mean, there are people that stay in the facilities through the winter to make sure that the buildings are maintained, do research in the winter. Right, Most of the but research... for a reason, which the reason wasn't given, is my oh. point. Thank okay. you for attacking me five times about the thing that I'm right about, because I already know I'm right. Well, they, it, 
without having a definitive reason as to why they're there, it makes sense to have them there because there are people there in the in the winter. Like, that's fair. So, research station in Antarctica. Uh, there's actually several, but uh, help. the first one is destroyed and it belongs to the Norwegians who start off trying to shoot a dog. I don't want to talk about that. I'm I'm not I'm not talking about animals getting harmed in the process of this movie. Very shaky camera work to start <gasps> the movie. That was okay. So I know Blair Witch came out after that, but I obviously saw Blair Witch before that, and that's the first thing I thought of when I saw that camera work. I cannot stand that type of camera work. I can't. Like it, I don't find was it, it. Was it designed to be? unsettling well so i know I, when blair witch came out they said that that type of camera work is designed to be disorienting so right. i'm assuming that's probably a similar tactic but i don't find it disorienting i find it like i just want to turn the tv off like i just yeah. I have no interest in being involved in that yeah like, it just, just makes me not want to watch things right so that we got through it but that was not and then the dog thing yes you're you're a big You'd rather see people get murdered than dogs. Absolutely. Like, the dogs can't defend themselves. They can't. They can. They're big dogs. They're, they're huskies. They have teeth. Yeah, but it's different. There was, they, were, they were fighting against a gun. They don't have opposable thumbs. Also, that guy was a terrible shot. Yeah, he was a terrible shot. But it, that... Norwegian versus Americans. Bad shots versus good shots. I guess, I don't know. I mean, I've never met a Norwegian... Or gone shooting with a Norwegian, but he was objectively terrible. No. Also, the intro you called this the font. Oh yes. Was the Law and Order font? Well, so we, well, we, you. me. I don't know why I'm saying we. Yeah, don't give me credit. I. I mean, give me credit all, by all means. When when it started, thought it looked like the SVU font. Now Tyler looked it up right before we recorded this podcast, and it's very close, but like the N is a little different. So, I mean, it could be explained by the um, the time. I mean, I'm sure a lot of fonts have been updated. Or but it's just a very similar font. Like, it's in the same close. font family. Yes. But we will post a side-by-side so y'all can, like, decide if right. I'm just crazy. But uh, And then John, uh, or no, McGreedy is playing chess with the computer. Oh, he, yeah. He's introduced and he throws his drink in the computer and screws everyone out of being in Antarctica and have nothing else to do but play chess from time to time. So I actually read an interesting like theory on Reddit about that, is mm-hmm. that it was foreshadowing the end of the movie, that part of the movie. So he loses to the computer, just like he loses to the thing, and he ends up destroying it and harming it, harming for everybody else involved, just like he ends up destroying the place that they live. And... All right, well, I guess... Maybe. I don't know, but I just thought it was interesting. Just made him look like a terrible sport because you lost to a computer and now you've ruined it for everyone that's stuck there for the entire winter. So he looked like you? Oh, I, I don't know. I was just wondering if that's what you were saying. I'm not that bad a sport. Come on. Can we talk about his beard, though? Can can we talk about it? Yeah, okay. I'm just wondering because, like, I mean, I love beards. Like, I don't know if I've said that enough on this podcast, but I'm just yes. going to say it again. I love beards, but I did not like his beard, like, at all. It was fine. It was I mean, different colors. A, it was patchy. It's a, it's it didn't grow beard. properly. Like the, there were so many problems with it. It's a beard. I, no, and I don't even care about grooming or anything like that. I just love beards. But no, Kurt Russell. I'm sorry. No. All right. So back to the plot. We're getting sidetracked. I didn't have a problem with the beard. It was fine. It was just a beard. Uh, I hope you're not going to start telling me you're into beards because I mean no. the circus is coming to town. I'm sure. No, so they chase the dog down. They throw grenades at the dog, which grenades seem a little bit overkill for a dog. We don't know at that moment that it's the thing. But, but they did. Yes, they did. Makes a whole lot more sense when you think about it. Uh, and then he shoots a guy accidentally when they get to the camp. And then he gets shot in the face with a pistol from like 100 yards away. Well mm-hmm. done. Uh, they take in the dog. The dog turns into a monster. And starts infecting people, and they don't know who to trust, and then the camp blows up. Uh, okay, that's sure. The, oh, that's, that's, the, that's essentially the movie. I mean, that is essentially the movie. So I will start by saying that the dog thing did almost turn me off entirely to the movie. Like, I was pretty much shutting down, because it was... A little bit, yeah, a little it, bit. Well, it was just, to me, it was a big focus on that, and I, I read somewhere that he had done another movie. I think it was called, like, The Howler or something. 
um, with animatronic dogs, and so he didn't even really have interest in really working with dogs again. Well, the special effects guy. Yeah. So, anyway, I, I definitely don't want to see that movie. Just going to put that out there from what I read about that movie. Not doing it. I didn't read anything about the movie. What's what's the movie about? I don't know, and I, 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 all I know is it had to do with animatronic dog, and it was also a horror-type movie, and I'm all set. So, I wish that they had just focused on the thing becoming people that bothered me i also felt the beginning of the movie was very slow see i like the slow build up honestly like, i mean i don't mind slow burn horrors i really don't but this one did not catch my interest at the beginning i just kind of was like i think because i was so angry about the animals i wasn't attaching to the storyline at all i i do think that's fair because it to me it did have a good slow build up to the ending I got into it once we got past the animals. Fair. Um, so, yeah, the rest of the movie, I just have random things that I wrote down, my feelings during certain scenes. and. Okay, well, and do you want to talk about the fact that there were no women in this movie? So it failed the Bechdel test by, like, a thousand? It didn't fail by a thousand. It just failed straight it out of the gate. It didn't even have a female crew member. The one female crew member that it did have was pregnant and had to leave and was replaced by a male. Yeah, it didn't have any men in the movie, which, I mean, is fine. I mean, I will say that it... I mean, it's not fine by equality standpoints, but it 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 is explainable in terms of having men alone in a research base in Antarctica exactly for not wanting a woman to get pregnant, for having to be in Antarctica while you're being pregnant, because that would be problems. So you wouldn't bring one in case she got pregnant because all those men are super horny? Like what? I don't know. I don't know what the protocol is for that. I'm sure there are researchers in Antarctica. You think there's protocol to stop women from going to I'm not saying there's protocol that's stopping women from doing that. I'm just saying that it, for the time period, it may, in fact, line up with someone's expectations of men sitting in a research center in the middle of nowhere. Wow. Internet, come for him. What I was going to say is that I actually respect the fact that they stuck to the source material and there was no women in the in the source material. So for the movie itself, I respect the fact that they stuck to that. However, I do think John Carpenter could have had a few female crew members. I don't understand why. Well, I think, I mean, not to put myself even farther in a corner, but I think that if he had female characters, he would have been almost required by the studio execs to pigeonhole another needless romantic thing that doesn't make sense into this movie like big trouble what he, he seemed to break other barriers in this movie and not care about stereotypes i mean that's fair okay so okay no that's fine i don't so, know i just i think the so studio execs would... would force that on him and say we're, we're only going to help you fund this movie if you do that hmm. forcing it on him or forcing it on the woman because i mean they're good at forcing things on women wow that got dark and both <laughs> All right, accurate, yeah. but kind of dark. I, just, I was just curious about your opinion. Thank you. All right. Um, so yeah, I, there. I didn't. I didn't need women to be in the movie. It wouldn't have bothered me either way. But it was a, a fine movie regardless. Okay. I'm glad you didn't need women. Oh my god! I'm never gonna. I'm just. No, I'm just. I'm, I'm curious, done talking. I'm curious what the internet the has to the, say about that. I'm done living. I'm done living at this point. <laughs> I'm done living. I just give up on life. <laughs> My life is over. Uh, so I don't know where to go from He's here. He's so frazzled. I don't. Uh, the, the cast was spectacular. They worked well. There was a great tension of interplay between people wanting to kill each other. Who was your favorite? Um. Well, uh, before he turned into a monster, the crazy old guy. The one that had the noose? Because he was my yeah. favorite. Yeah. Yeah, he was wonderful. Exactly. Who, do we know who that actor was? I think that's Wilford Brimley. Oh, is actually. it? Actually. Okay. He was wonderful. Like, he was really good, and he was... So he ended up being, like, the uber thing, right, At, towards the end? Yes, he was the final monster. Right. Which, they never explained how he was infected, other than being in the cabin at some point, but... Well... Regardless, but he was really good, and his his freakout scene was amazing. Spectacular! Like I was, I 
I would have taken that part just to have that scene, just to just break stuff for the sake of breaking stuff. That sounds so much fun. No, I 100% agree. Um, no, the whole cast is great, and I didn't have a problem with any of the, the acting in the movie. Well, so if you're talking about cast, Nick Nolte and Jeff Bridges both turned down the role of McReady. How do you feel that would have changed the movie? Um, so, you know, I don't know who Nick Nolte is, so... You know That's... who Jeff Bridges is. Well, of course. Uh, I honestly think Jeff Bridges would have been a better choice over Nick Nolte. But, but do they're you think both... they would have been better choices over Kurt Russell? That I don't know. I don't think so. Because they, they both have their own style to things. But Kurt Russell does have that kind of cockiness, that just clear manly confidence that comes from somewhere. I mean, Jeff Bridges does too, but I find him more um, easygoing. Like he doesn't and have funny, the, like, right? Like exactly. A, so it's not the same same persona right. that comes through the screen. So I think they hit hit it out of the park with getting Kurt Russell to do this movie. So wait, are 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 you saying you like Kurt Russell? Can I can I get a confirmation? In this movie, Kurt Russell did a, a wonderful job. Whoa! Why are you so surprised by that? Because you did not like him in Big Trouble. Because I hated him in an objectively terrible movie does not mean that this movie, which is not terrible, which is in fact good and a classic, I can't like him in a classic movie. No, I'm, ju- I'm just, okay, so Internet, you've won. He likes a John Carpenter movie and he likes Kurt Russell, so I think the Internet has I won. I never said argument. I didn't. I just said I didn't like that particular one. I, I'm impressed. I do want to come out, there were a couple weird scenes to me. Like okay. Go one ahead. scene when they go to the Norwegian station. Uh, first off, why do they bring the infected body back? Like, no. Just... That, but they okay. So I, did Alien come out around this time? Because it's a very very just alien. Just before this. Okay. So very alien. Like right. that whole bringing it back, doing the autopsy, even things coming out of the stomach, like all of that stuff reminded me of Alien, and I didn't right. know which one came first. So Alien came first. So maybe they were hearkening to that. I don't know. But it seems that all of those movies feel the need to, like, do an autopsy to learn about it to, I guess, then be able to beat it? I don't know. But at the same time, the doctor is like, what is that? To the, like, the burned human remains. It's like, really, dude? You're a, you're a doctor. Yeah, that like, was. You, you, you have looked at dead bodies before, I'm right, sure. Right, you're supposed to be able to identify them. That, so. that is your job. <laughs> um. Although, to be fair, I guess it didn't look like a normal human. But at well, the same time... it wasn't. It was not a normal human. It was also lit on fire at one point. Right. But, but I mean, don't doctors like identify bodies like out of like fires and things like that? I'm sure forensic pathologists well, do. Right. And someone has to. Corners. Yeah. So. I, I don't know. I just it found me... It struck me as weird that he didn't realize that. I will say that Wilford Brimley is the only person that was able to do the autopsy scene without grossing out because they used real organs. Animal organs. Yes. I, I read that and that... See, like, that bothers me. Again, animals. Can we not? Well, what if they were they were already dead? They didn't kill the animals specifically for that. Well, I would hope so. Well, I mean, yeah, so... It's, they Can you just... imagine if they, like, cut into, like, a dog on screen and just, like, pulled stuff out? Like, God, PETA would go crazy. Well, this is back in the 80s, so probably before... Did PETA not exist in the 80s? I don't know. They probably did exist, but at the same time, people were a little bit more laissez-faire about animal rights back before. Apparently, according to you, they were laissez-faire about animal rights. They were laissez-faire about women. I don't know what else they were laissez-faire about, but I guess we might find out. Um, I'm going to get some 80s people at your I was also really confused. When they have the the first instance with the the dog, Mm -hmm. it, or the thing movie? Yes, yes. The, the thing monster was killing all the dogs uh-huh. in that horrible scene that you hated. Yes. And they hit it with the flamethrower. Mm-hmm. And then they instantly put it out with fire extinguishers. Why? So there is a theory on that. You don't read these theories, do you? But there no. is a theory that... I don't do the deep dives. That's your job for the podcast. <sighs> well, according to the theory, they did that because they were afraid that other things were going to set on fire in the area. And they did not think that it was going to take that long to put it out. And the reason that later on, Mac or McReady or whatever you want to call him says, no, 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 don't put it out. Don't do that is because he realized that 
what they were doing was putting it out too soon, and that's why it was still breeding, and it was, like, way too further the plot, but allowing it to still breed. Mm-hmm. So, that's the theory. It's just the same time. My first thing, my first instinct in that scenario would be, yeah, we're going to let it burn for as long as it has to burn. Yeah, but you got to figure that they probably have very limited shelter there, so they're probably not trying to ruin their shelter either. I mean, fair, but there have to be other separate buildings that they could use for warmth to make sure that that thing is dead. I guess, but if you don't really understand what you're dealing with. Also, how much weed did they have? Let me ask you that, because there was a lot of smoking in this movie. Did it bother you? No, I was just surprised. How would you have that much weed? you got to ration that if you're in Antarctica, I would imagine, because it doesn't grow there. How do you know where weed grows? Do you have a guy? It's Antarctica. Nothing grows there. Antarctica is basically ice and penguins. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe the penguins are the dealers. I don't know. Really? <laughs> We're going to go with penguins are dealing weed. <laughs> That's your answer. I mean, there's got to be a meme for that out there. Anything um, else before we get no? into the major? What, what do you want to talk about? I'm derailing the whole train. So. Well, I mean, it's fine. It's totally fine. I mean, so obviously it was didn't do well in theaters like many of the movies we watch. It didn't do well and it became a cult classic and whatever. But we have to talk about the main controversy because we have to. The main controversy, yes. Which is not a real controversy except it's a manufactured controversy. Because Jar- John Carpenter is a son of a bitch. So... I'm going to actually jump into audience ask because people have asked about this and we didn't get a lot of questions because admittedly I asked it about two hours ago because I'm horrible at this job. So, um, let's see who asked it because I know someone did. Okay. Films on trial said, is child's a thing or not? And what happened to Nalls? So included in that question, I want to say, is McReady a thing? Is anybody a thing at the end of the movie and where did Nalls go? Basically. Nalls got absorbed and got blown up in the dynamite. Uh, I, According to original testimony by John Carpenter, neither McCready or Child is a thing. And, and then he changed his mind. But that testimony came because the thing 2002 um, had them both being confirmed as human and he confirmed that was canon. Right. Okay. But then... So if he confirmed it as canon, you can't change it from being canon. That's not how that works. But then later on, he said on Reddit that Kurt Russell and Keith David, at the end of the movie, were both staring each other down and barely breathing, and the only one that can be seen with any breath marks is Kurt Russell. And that proves that Keith David is not a thing. I will say for the record, by the way, that I do not no, believe... No, it confirms that he is a thing, not that he's not a oh, thing. Oh, right, that he is a thing. Is a thing. I will say for the record that I don't believe that Childs was the thing. I thought while watching the movie that Kurt Russell was the thing. Which I've is been another saying conspiracy. That for a very long time throughout the movie, actually. There is also another theory that I had mentioned when we finished watching this movie that states that Childs drank the liquor from the bottle that Kurt Russell had replaced with kerosene... From Molotov cocktails. Right, and did not notice. So Kurt Russell realizes he's the thing as the movie fades to black. And it realizes child is the thing. Right, exactly. Right. Now, I believe, I believed that Kurt Russell was the thing. That spawned for me from two things while watching the movie. There's more now that I've read, but at the time of watching the movie, what I had said was, one, the coat. They had found his coat. Right. Um, ripped apart. Although that and you... was possibly a plant. But this is what I thought at the time of the movie. Okay. This is what I said then. So okay. I'm, I'm going with That's what fair. I said then. So the coat, you, we know that the thing assimilates um, into the person and tears apart their clothing. So one, that. We knew that he had been with people at the time. So that could have happened. And then two, what I had been saying was the blood thing. He was the one controlling the blood. Controlling the blood. Now, I didn't notice at the time that he also didn't give his blood on screen, so he could have contaminated it, but I kept saying, well, he's controlling it, so I mean, he can do whatever he wants. I mean, it could be him. It could be him. So, I still maintain that that's possible. Also, quick question. Yes. In the blood testing scene, when they're all tied to the chair, and one of them is the thing, and they catch him, 
after that whole chair goes up and crazy and one of the guys gets his head bitten off, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Did they not redraw the blood from the two guys that were sitting next to him that whole time? Or did they test the original sample? Because that I need an answer for. It looked like they tested the original sample. Because that is dumb. I agree. Now, I wanted to say that since I've read, my argument has been made stronger that McGreedy could have been the thing because somebody said um, that there's a point in the movie where Kurt Russell says something to the effect of the thing just wants to, like, freeze and go into slumber Mm -hmm. and, like, be hidden from everybody. And so at the end of the movie, that's basically what's happening. He's burnt everything and now he's allowed to freeze and go into slumber. So they were saying like he's doing exactly what the thing would want to do to self-preserve, not make itself known and just freeze and go into slumber, which is exactly what he said the thing wanted. Well, there are instances of the thing killing off other things. Right. Uh, The spider head being the best example. Right, but apparently the thing is all about self-preservation. So if it felt it was going to, by exposing itself, it would get killed, it wouldn't expose itself. It would. Right. So that's why they're saying he's just letting everything burn and he's going into a deep, cold slumber so he can come back. Well, I I didn't get that vibe at all when I watched the movie. Because you can clearly see his breath. I mean... Is there proof that the thing doesn't breathe? Is that well, if the conversation between Childs and McCready at the end is any indication and Childs is not breathing, then yes. But is there any other proof earlier in the movie that the thing doesn't breathe? Like, were there other characters that didn't show breath marks when they were speaking? That so, when they were the thing? Well, they were inside, so I don't know if that factors in to the majority of the movie. That's one of the things I liked about this movie, that there was a great containment part of it. So Alien had the spaceship... This one has the Antarctic Station research facility. Mm -hmm. A lot of good horror movies have that element where there's no way to get away. So that's one of the things that bothers me about movies where it's like, you're in the woods. Just hike hike through the woods. (laughs) Right. Run. Run in a straight line. You're literally running for your life. Adrenaline is a hell of a thing. (laughs) Just keep going. It's like the, the Dory from Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, but <laughs> just agree. just keep running, All which right, is well. always... I like I like that aspect of this movie. There's a lot of things that I do like about this, and I can understand why it's a cult classic, because I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Okay, do you want to talk about more of them? Because you seem like you um, do. Well, I liked the, the stunning visuals of the thing in different places, where it just it's the visceral... It's, it killed so many people. So the special many... effects were really good. On like point. for for the time. I mean, even honestly for now, like there are some movies you see and you're like, holy crap, like we have come a long way. That is just but this really wasn't well that I mean, jarring of the special effects and makeup guy, Rob Botton, has done a lot of things. He apparently wasn't credited at the time that somewhere it said that. I mean he's done special effects and makeup for Game of Thrones, Total Recall, Robocop, but he Seven, was in his twenties back Club. then. Well, Back then, so this is when he was first starting out. Right, but I mean, for the 80s, this is pretty good It's up good there, it's graphics. fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean. Uh, so I like that. What else did I like? Um, I like the, the uncertainty of not knowing which person is infected. They did a great interplay where they're trying to figure it out, and you're left in the dark for the whole movie. Even to the end, where we don't know whether or not one or both of them are infected right and i mean it's it's interesting that we both have different theories on that because i mean for me when i was watching it like i was like no it has to, he has to be the, like i couldn't understand why he wouldn't be and i mean and we're both perfectly okay with it being either way like it's there well, is nothing to tell you tell us that either one of us is wrong like obviously right. there's fan theories and whatever but well the only thing that i can feel like i could rule out is both of them being the thing because if they're both the thing at the end of the movie, they wouldn't be having a conversation. Why do you think that? Why would they have? Why would the thing have a conversation with itself? Because what if the thing doesn't know that there's other things out there? Like maybe it's a species and not one thing. Well, it's I I don't know I don't know I just I mean I would say that they just would be 
kind of like a hive mentality where they're all connected. But you don't know that. I would, I don't know. So if but, someone can tell me that, because I think that at most one of them was the thing. But I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I got. So there's, we have to at least do two audience ask questions. So, so we just did that one. I'm sorry, Films on Trial, that this was literally the longest audience answer asks? to that question yes. I, we've ever given. But I liked this question, and I also just like this person. So Ryan Terry said to us, um, when I analyzed this film in graduate school, I came to the conclusion that there is one philosophical question that drives the plot and the conflict therein, the problem with others' minds. Can we truly know if our friend or neighbor is themselves or a facsimile? Great stuff. Facsimile? Facsimile. I always say it facsimile. I... I've always done that for my life. But anyways. Um, so the only thing we know is I think therefore I am. So the only thing you know is you exist. Anything ab- past that, you're you're assuming. Okay, but I mean, can there's... we truly know a friend or enablers themselves or, or a copy? Because I'm not going to try to say that word again. Um, we, we don't know. No, and I mean, so there's this, I know you don't watch YouTube, but there's a, a thing going on right now about talking about sociopaths and talking about, like, what people people present themselves versus what they actually are, and right. like, the, the persona and things like that. And I think it's interesting to think about that because in this movie, the thing presents itself as... A person. As a person trying to be the best copy of that person that they can be with very little limited information because all they're really getting is whatever they can devour, the cells or whatever. Well, and I think they soul... also get the memories of that person. Don't, I mean... I mean, you're you know? assuming. I'm, I am assuming. But even with that, your soul makes up who you are. So... Well, there's, is, well, there has to be a distinction between who you are and who people see you to be. Like... Well, the, and those are two very different things. Right. And the person you are anyway. is different than the person that you present to the public. I well, mean, for most people. For most people. You are in the minority on that, but I mean, the majority of people. Right. So that, that really is a question. Is the thing the thing you or the just a representation of you outwardly? Yeah, I mean, I and I don't know, but I, I find that an interesting thing to think about. And I think we, I think you kind of all, you get that vibe in horror movies with the, um, you know, like the, oh, it's your neighbor or, oh, it could be like your best friend. Like it could be whoever. Like I think those are the movies that really are the scariest to me is like when they make it somebody that's like close to you and you realize like it could literally be anybody. And it's like. I think that's an interesting thing to think about is the fact that you just literally don't know when right. you're talking to somebody. Are you talking to that person or are you talking to this person that they presented themselves to be? Right. I mean, we've all had, like, it's one of those things where we can all relate to those horrible thoughts that we have all had where, like, I could push someone off a cliff or I could drive into oncoming traffic. Like, just the, the weird, horrible monstrous thoughts that everyone I'm assuming has. I'm going to let you just... Do you not have just, those thoughts just occasionally? Just tread that like, water. No? I'm I mean, alone on that? That I've wanted to... Like, you've never had the... the you never act on these, obviously, but you have those thoughts... Yeah, I always say, I want to punch a baby. That's like my, my well, right, that's my thought. Line. Exactly. Like, that's my line. So we all have those thoughts. I would never so, do them. I'm not saying you would ever do them, but everyone has those thoughts, and so people are aware enough to realize that other people have those thoughts and the terrifying thing is people sometimes do act on those thoughts yeah and you just don't know like if i so if i say i'm gonna punch a baby you know because you know me that that's just a phrase that i said you're not actually going to punch a baby but if you were talking to a complete stranger and they said that out loud there would be a half a minute thought of do really though or or just fake like you just don't know you literally don't know Right, so like it's just one of those things where some people are capable of monstrous things, and we all have those horrible thoughts at times. The overwhelming majority of people don't do anything about it, but some people do, and right. you just never know. And I think that adds to the scare, the scare factor of this movie is just knowing that at any point someone could be the thing, and you would never know because it can be that good of a copy. That's just. And we do have to talk about that scene where the guy goes nuts, because that was awesome. Again. 
Okay, go for it. What do you want to say? Because about it's it? the right decision. He just didn't tell anyone about the decision. Oh yeah, like, you said that during the movie. Like commendable that you are willing to sacrifice your life for the betterment of humankind, but just be like, just FYI, guys, we're all screwed, and we should all let ourselves in fire, and call it a day. I mean, that would end the movie faster, but I mean, that's. I mean, as horrible as it is, it's the right decision. I mean, is it possible that he was already infected then and he was aware of it and that's why he was freaking out and doing that? The only other thing is he's already infected at that point and he's destroying the communication to let them warn other people. Oh, see, I was thinking it was possible that he was aware but he was fighting it and so he was trying to get rid of, like, kill himself off because he knew that eventually it was going to take over and... I don't know, but... It's the right impulse and it's the right decision to make for the... But wrong way to go about it? Yes. Just be like, guys, we're all going to die. We're all going to die and we're going to record this for posterity that we saved humanity. But we're all dead. Anything Uh, else you want to get into? Because we have gone over again. Yes, I know. I know. Uh, The literal plot hole. We have to talk about the literal actual plot hole. The ice cave that just was somehow... You you find this so funny and and, 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 and I don't even... Well, it was a it's a giant underground cave with a spaceship in it under the research station the whole time. Where did it come from? Explain that. And to you me. said plot hole. Yeah, literal plot hole. And you said literal plot hole. I just said that's a plot hole because <laughs> I can't for the life of me understand it. And you went literally. <laughs> it just so. seems funny, but no, I mean, so there were. I honestly, this was the biggest plot hole in the movie. There were a few other things, I'm sure, but uh. Yeah, I think it just needed to be there for the movie to continue, really. To expedite the plot. Yeah, I mean... I mean, there's no other explanation other than it's there to advance the rest of the end of the movie. Right. I mean, I'm sure if we went down and tried to, like, dig into things, there's other plot holes for sure. Because, I mean, I was reading some theories and they get real deep. Like, well, that was just the, the most glaring one to me. That it was just, oh, here's a spaceship in a giant underground lair. Right, yeah, that was that was a lot. Um... Yeah, that's all I got. I love this movie. It was thoroughly enjoyable. All right, so do a rating. I will say 9.25. Wow, I was going to give it a 9. I took off the point for the animal cruelty because, you know. There was no actual animal cru- cruelty. No dogs were actually hurt in this movie. Oh, the dog. Name Jed. was Jed. <laughs> yes. I mean, he, he was apparently a very good show dog. So, I mean, that also makes me happy wolf. that he was a Malamute. Wolf, Malamute, Crossbreed. Anyways, I was happy that they gave a working dog a good job, but I just, yeah, can't get past it. But anyway, so next week is technically my choice, but I kind of forfeit my choice because it falls on Halloween. And unfortunately, or fortunately, fortunately. I don't know which way you want to say that. You just angered the internet by saying unfortunately. Well, I, I, I'm very structured and I like schedules and I don't like doing too many of the same things in a row but we have to do halloween on halloween because we it's have halloween to, and we have to do the original because i know there's a remake out there and everyone is doing and everyone's talking about it but this is our first halloween podcast i feel like we need to do the first halloween and it's actually halloween so we didn't have a choice right so we're doing halloween and we just found out well at least i just found out i don't know if you knew before but that john carpenter did the first halloween i did not okay so we both just found that out so roast us it's fine but so that's what we're doing next week i'm excited for it but um yeah i'm a little little sad that we did two john carpenter movies in a row that's not usually my plan i know one final thing I did look this up. Mm-hmm. Coldest temperature in Antarctica? Yes, is? Negative 128. Yeah, I would literally die. I'm cold in 70 degree weather, so let's just figure that out. I Well, yeah, you're cold in 80 degree weather. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's be- Anything below 98.6, <laughs> you're cold. Basically, that that's a fair assessment. But anyways, we are well over as we always are. So, uh, thank you guys for well, listening. The, the, this is just the new normal length, so we're fine. Oh, okay, yeah. We, we've we suddenly extended our 30-minute podcast to 45 minutes, so we ran under. So, it's fine. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, so next week is Halloween. I'm really excited for it. I need to say my thank you to Jake at Athis Music for our intro and outro music. And I don't know what that was for. And 
also wanted to let everyone know if you saw the Rocky Horror Picture Poll, Clue won. It did make it onto the calendar, so that will be coming at some point in the future if you guys were curious. All right. And that's it.